New at 530, this summer will mark the first without most pandemic era travel restrictions, and that means demand for air travel is expected to be high. But what about the surging airfare prices we've been telling you about? Philip Townsend shows us why it may not be as bad as you think. The busiest summer travel season in years. That's what economists have been predicting. And with it comes worries of soaring flight prices as millions of Americans plan summer trips. But it may not be as bad as you think. It all depends on where you plan on going. In March, travelers spent $9.6 billion on upcoming spring and summer flights. That broke the previous $9.3 billion record in March of 2019. That's according to Airlines Reporting Corporation. And yes, flights are a lot more expensive, but that's mainly international flights. Flights to Europe, for example, are up 36 percent compared to this time last year. But here's the good news, at least for people with less ambitious plans. The average airfare for domestic flights is actually down 20 percent. Check it out. Right now you can book a round-trip flight to New York for any date in June or July for about $150. Not bad at all. If you still want to maximize your savings, though, industry analysts suggest booking as soon as possible and then setting a price alert for your flight. That way, if the price drops in a few weeks, some airlines allow you to rebook at the lower fare and then pocket the rest for a future flight. Two other things. More good news first. According to Hopper, rental car prices are also down about 17 percent. But unfortunately, most of the savings there will be negated by hotel prices. The per night stay at hotels up around 11 percent compared to last year. For 13 News Now, I'm Philip Townsend. We're learning more tonight about the administration's promised new rules for airlines. Refunds are required for long flight delays or cancellation when there's a mechanical computer or crew issue. Now, President Biden wants cash, meals, hotel and transportation vouchers to be included as mandatory compensation. Similar rules are in effect in Canada and Europe. And guess what? It works. One study found that the European Union required airlines to compensate passengers for flight delays. The number of flight delays went down. The group Airlines for America warns the proposal will force the airlines to raise airfare costs. You should know they are a lobbying group that represents major airlines.